Hey! Hey! You good? Yeah. We got it? Where's Marvin? He's up front. Come on, yeah. Bro. What's up? Holy fuck. Bro, unbelievable. Bro, unbelievable. Did, they just, did, they did he get hit? No. I think, I think there was something. He was standing. He was standing at the end. Bro, he had a blood right here, bro. Democrats can't shoot. Bro, I called it. They were going to... Really? Did you oh, see the man. fucking? Did you see the forklift yeah. go down? Stay together. Where's Jason? Let's stay together. Let's stay together. They fucking hit. Fucking Democrats. Thank you, sir. Trump just got hit. Yo. No. Trump just got hit. Bro, that's the that's the helicopter that was parked in front of my airplane. That was the helicopter that was parked in front of the plane. It's gonna probably land in the field. No, his security, all those snipers, all there were secret service everywhere. There was police, there was there was like a few people everywhere. Look, they're bringing Trump here. They're bringing Trump. You dirty mother. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. Do you hear me? Huh. The one cop car, your window was blown out. Dude, that mother. Trump. Trump. Coming to Butler Hospital. Trump, come to Butler Hospital. Look, they're bringing Trump here. They're bringing Trump. You dirty mother. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. Do you hear me? Huh. The one cop car, your window was blown out. Dude, that mother... Trump! Trump! Coming to Butler Hospital! Trump! Coming to Butler Hospital!
Um, so President Trump, uh, the former president of the United States of America, has released a statement, which I shall read to you. Uh, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I heard a whizzing sound, shot and immediately felt the bullet ripping through their skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. That is a statement from um, the former president of the United States of America, who has been, well, it is in my mind, uh, it's not officially been called it, but I'll call it as I see it, um, an assassination attempt. If by all the agencies in the federal government as a situation, based on what we know now, I have tried to get a hold of Donald. Uh, he's with his doctors. Uh, they, apparently, he's doing well. I plan on talking to them shortly, I hope, when I get back to the uh, telephone. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. And so and I want to thank the Secret Service and all the agencies, including the state agencies, that have been engaged in making sure that the people who and we have more detail to come relative to other injured, other people maybe injured in the audience. I don't have all that detail. We'll make that available to you. I may be able to come back a little later tonight, but we'll put out a statement if we don't, if I'm not able to give if, if it's not convenient for you all. But the bottom line is the, the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully and without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. And we, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. I'll keep you informed. And if I am able to speak to, the, to Donald, I'll, I'll let you know that as well. But so far, it appears he's doing well. Number one, number two, that they're thoroughly investigating what happened to anyone else in the audience. I have we have some reports, but not final reports. And every agency in the federal government, I'll be, and I'm going back to, to my phone to speak with the federal agencies that are being put together again to give me an updated briefing. Has anything happened? They learned any more in the last couple hours. So thank you very much, and I hope I get to speak to them tonight, and I'll get to back to you if I do. Okay. Assassination attempt? I don't know enough to. I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some comment, any more comment.
you see anyone injured besides the blood on the former president? All I saw was the gentleman from Beaver County who spoke earlier in the day. He was running for the State House Representative, Elmore. I know his name. He had a white shirt on, and I saw him come from that left stands where the people were mostly shot. I think there were several. They said three medevacs left here. Blood was down the right side of his... He wasn't shot, but you could see that he was next to somebody who must have been bleeding profusely because he either helped them and ran, you know, rubbed against them or tried to get them help or something. It was covered. So I knew that he was near somebody. That was my first indication indication that somebody was actually shot when I saw his blood on his shirt. Aaron, when did you realize that, hey, this might not be fireworks, this might be something else? When they got Trump down on the ground. And then we were just so concerned that he wasn't hit because we couldn't. It happened so fast, you know, it's really hard to process it. You know, I guess when they, if you have it on the, your camera to see the exact minute, you can tell. But when he got up, he did not look bad at all. He didn't. He looked very strong. So then I saw that little bit when I saw that blood. I thought, he must have just hurt himself. Hope uh, someone who was here. You weren't inside the event, nope. but you were just outside. Tell us what you saw. And what. So, so we had a party here all day. I think you can see behind us at the, the Brinkles Farming Greenhouse here. We had a party. Um, and we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field stand by the trees up there under the shade yeah. and watch the, and listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see them, but we could hear them. So we walked up and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. The rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And... Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. 100%. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three to four would, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police from the Secret Service. We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, right. did you see what happened to him at all? Oh yeah, they blew his head off. You, okay, sorry. Secret Service blew his head off. Okay, we just be careful because we don't even quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, okay. yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay, yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead and that was it, it was over. It's incredibly shocking. The guy was on the roof right there. You can see the white roof right there. Did you get a look at him? Could you? I, I No, other than he was in muted colors, tan type clothing. I, we saw the rifle flinging around as he was trying to crawl. I mean, we saw the rifle, 100%. Do you, do, I mean, do you know about guns? Do you know what kind of weapon it was? Oh, I absolutely know about guns, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a rifle of some sort. I wouldn't know, you know, I wasn't close enough to read the label on it. No, but sure. but it, was a, it was a rifle of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you, how do you process what you've just seen? <sighs> I, I don't know what to say, man. All I'll tell you is, you know, if I, if I walked up close to there with anything that can, Secret Service considered a, a, a problem, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now. But I don't know why a guy who we're standing there pointing now to police and Secret Service is crawling up the roof. Were you outside the security perimeter? Yes, right there by that tree. We were outside the security perimeter. But my question is, there's only a few buildings around here. Why is Secret Service not on every building? 
Here. Well, there's a whole bunch of questions, I think, that are going to come. There's a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. yeah. Yes, she was right in front of me. She kept going back and forth right in front of me. Yes. Tell us about her. What? I mean, nice horse, nice lady running with a flag. She seemed very, you know, patriotic. But what, what's, what's the significance of her? No, she just, he asked me if I saw a horse. Okay, okay. All right, well, listen, I'm sorry you had to witness that. That was a terrible thing. And uh, you should stay safe with your family and uh, gotcha. help yourself. Um, thanks for your gotcha, time. Man. Fortunately, their quick response today resulted in a president not lo losing his life. And, you know, he was half an inch away from losing his life. I think when you look at the details of what they have to do every day, the advances, it really brings home that Secret Service agents must be on their game every minute of every day because if you think of the number of stops, you think of what they have to do daily, they have to be ready. And today they were ready. This Elena. I am, yes. Hi, Wolfa. I'm here with Joseph Mine. Um, he was sitting actually behind Donald Trump in the bleachers today when this all unfolded. He, um, I'm going to let him share exactly what he saw. It was a very harrowing moment that he, he was there for. Can you please tell us what happened, Joseph? Yeah, it was the Trump, uh, I was attending the rally. Um, it seemed initially like firecrackers went off. Um, it was a little. It was very confusing initially because you know I knew it was gunfire, but I couldn't quite tell where it was coming from. It sounded like it was coming from behind the bleachers, and the man in the bleachers, um, kind of to the right of me in the bleachers, took a gunshot wound to the head. Um, it was killed, and another woman. I, she, I don't know exactly where she was in the bleachers. I think she was either behind me or to the right of me. She got around in the. She got hit in the forearm and hand. It looked like, but it just if she was wounded, she wasn't killed. Can I ask you how you're feeling? Obviously, you just witnessed something terrible happen. Um, a lot of chaos was in the room. How exactly are you feeling right now, Joseph? You know, it's something you don't expect. You know, it's it's a bolt out of the blue, so it's very shocking. It's just, I think a lot of people in the crowd just thought it was fireworks going off. I knew immediately it was gunshots. I, I you know, I, I knew they were close. And then when I saw someone get hit and go down, um, that's when I knew it was probably serious. Um, you know, it was a lot of confusion. It's just massive confusion, you know, throughout the event. Um, I saw Donald Trump get hit. Um, it looked like he had, look, you know, he was either. I have, a, I was running my camera at the time, but it looked like he was just turning to the. He was turning his head to the side. And it looked like he got grazed in the in the right ear with a bullet. Um, I kind of saw that go on, and then I looked down. I saw that the man, you know, died in the bleachers. Um, it was just complete pandemonium. Like every, you know, there was a bit of a delay, like there was a lot of confusion, but immediately, you know, it seemed like more gunfire erupted. I couldn't figure out where that was coming from. And then, you know, there was a state policeman there. A, I believe a SWAT team, you know, showed up relatively quickly. They jumped the side. There was a fence, you know, it was next to the bleachers. They jumped the bleachers and started clearing the bleachers. And then I helped carry the body of the man down out of the bleachers and they took him to a tent uh, behind the bleachers. Uh, we put a towel over his head, but he is deceased. You were telling me before when we were chatting briefly that you never had a chance to make it to a Trump rally, that this was your first yes. time. Do, would you feel safe coming back to another Trump rally? Yeah, I, yeah you know, it, it's a very random event that happens. You know, I, I, I feel safe generally where I go in the country. You know, I think the problem is, is we have a very Everyone seems very angry, and, you know, it, it makes you kind of, you know, I'll go to a Trump rally again, but I'll think twice. Um, you know, you definitely want to have your head on the swivel. It just seems like there's a lot of angry people out there, and I, I, I'm not shocked that this happened. Um, I'm shocked that I was sitting there and it happened next to me. Obviously, you don't, you never anticipate that to happen, but you know, it's, it's, it's just horrible. You know, we, we shouldn't be at a level of polit political discourse in this country where this is going on. It feels like it's 1960 again. Uh, you know, it's just, it's horrible. Can you describe for me, Joseph, what happened after you saw the shots? And I remember, I mean, I was there as well. Secret Service was screaming for everyone to get down. They quickly tried to clear the area. I, I'm just curious what that process was like for you in the in the aftermath. Very confusing. Like I said, I think everyone was in the bleachers. Knew, it was initially confusing when the gunshots erupted. Half, I think the crowd thought it was fireworks. I think someone thought they were playing a joke. and. 
you know, if the people were close to the people that got injured and killed, you obviously knew it wasn't a joke. And it was, it seemed like there was a push pull in the crowd. And that is one half of the crowd on the far end of the rally thought it was some type of weird joke. The other half of the crowd knew it wasn't, was trying to push or impress upon the rest of the crowd that this is serious. And I, I think everyone got the idea very quickly that it was a dangerous situation and everyone just started hitting the deck and you know kudos to the secret service you know again you know when you're in these situations a second feels like it's an hour but it seemed like authorities were there very quickly um it just seemed to me like i said i was sitting there it seemed like the rounds came from behind and they they got this they, they hit the gentleman in the head you know he got a gunshot wind to the head and the other lady was injured and then i saw trump president trump you know get hit and it looked like his right ear but it seemed initially everyone was in, like half the, sh the crowd was in shock and the other half thought it was some type of weird joke. And it just, it took, it took a bit for everyone to get a good understanding of what was going on. So. You mentioned that you had spoken with the person who ended up falling, I believe you said, or he no. was with his whole family? No, his family watched it happen. Um, so they were in the bleachers when he got hit and he went down. I, I think they were trying to figure out if he, what was going on. They were screaming for help. Um, the body was, they put a towel over the man's head. The body was removed from the bleachers. Then the police came back, you know, right after and tried to move the family. But they were all in shock. They didn't quite, they weren't processing what was going on. Um, the man was definitely, he was dead the minute he was hit. I mean, it was something that reminded me of the Zapruder film from Kennedy. I mean, it was, it was his head snapped and that was it. And I, I caught it out of the corner of my eye, and you know, and then there was just pandemonium. And again, you, you know, it's Pennsylvania. You don't, you know, you're out in rural Pennsylvania. You don't really anticipate this is going to happen, but it happened. You mentioned, and I'm sorry. I know this is very emotional for you as well. Um, um, you mentioned that, you know, this was your first Trump rally. How are you feeling about the election now? What are you hoping? To, to see moving forward. We've already seen a lot of statements of support from across the aisle come in for the former president. I can tell you too from our sources that they say that Donald Trump is okay, that he is at a local facility being treated. Um, but I would love just your view on, I know you came here today to support the man that, um, you know, the former president. I'm, I'm curious how you think about this now. I know it's a, it's a hard question given the, the chaos that we're currently in and the adrenaline that we're both face, feeling right now. But if you can share any of that insight. It solidifies my my support. I, I you know, I understand you know, people under I, I, people believe that Trump's well. They know that he's bombastic. They don't really like him. He's a very polarizing figure. He has an abrasive personality. But I truly believe he has the best interests of the country at heart. And you know, you make a point. You know, the man's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. He could be sitting in the you know, like you said at the you were sitting at the rally joking about. It. He's like I could be sitting in the Mediterranean on a yacht enjoying my life, but I'm not. I'm trying to help run the country. It, it puts in perspective there's a real cost for that. I mean, there, there's some people that really want him dead. And it, to me, this is just ridiculous. Like, you know, we have a lot of political violence in this country. It comes from all, it, you know, it's not so much from the right, it comes from everywhere. And it just needs to stop. Um, yeah, JFK, at RFK, you've had Martin Luther King. Now you're going to, you know, attempt the life of Reagan. And now you have an attempted, you know, assassination of Trump. It's just ridiculous. And it just, you know. I don't think it's a gun problem. I don't think it's a violence problem. I think there's a lot of angry people that just have too much interest in politics, and it's a zero-sum game to them. Um, you know, politics shouldn't be a zero-sum game where someone every someone wins everything and someone loses everything. Mm -hmm. And I think this is this is a result of that. Um, people it came today. You know, we're very happy. They're here to support Trump. But you could you, you can tense you can you can when you talk to people in the crowd, you, you, there's a tenseness. Um, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to talk to family members about politics because it just gets too angry. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what to tell you, but this needs to stop. Thank you so much, Joseph. I, I very much appreciate your time and I stay safe tonight. I Thank hope you. you get home safe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, There's just one person. We talked to many people today who have been leaving the rally who are very emotional. They're angry. They're upset. Um, 
I think Joseph had a particularly harrowing experience given what he had saw and, and seeing a man be killed um, here tonight. And so a lot of emotions. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm currently in the parking lot. Uh, no one is moving. I think they have put a hold on this, on everyone from getting out. We've seen cars parked here for a long time. So everyone still, who I'm talking to, says that they're still processing this. They're still trying to sort through their emotions after what had happened today. Wolf. Yeah, Elena, it's clearly a crime scene right now. That's why the situation is unfolding as it is right now. We're watching all of this uh, develop right now. I want to go to Anderson.